we're going to draw one of the most intelligent animals that there is. And in fact, this bird can recognize itself in the mirror. And that is the magpie. So, let's draw a magpie. Okay, so today I decided to try something a little bit different. Today we're going to be using a tinted pastel paper. And I'm going to go to the uh, kind of the blue tint today, I think. It's the one that I want to use. And I'm going to be using um, charcoal pencils such as these. I'm using up some of my, uh, my old ones here. They are General's um, charcoal pencils. And I've also got a, uh, a white Kohenor chalk pencil. And I've got a piece of chalk here for the highlights in the end. And also, I needed an eraser. And if you've seen the show before, you know that uh, I like to uh, use a kneaded eraser and it's been kind of fun lately. Um, I've been actually rolling them into the little shape. So today I've got a little magpie eraser to do the, uh, the highlights because I, I really enjoy sculpting as well as doing uh, painting and drawing. So, um, oh yeah, don't forget, uh, we always need a, a Kleenex for doing some uh, shading. If you haven't got any of those things, white paper is uh, is just fine. You can use a piece of white paper, or in this case, a cream-colored paper, and just your your pencil, HB pencil like that. That's all you need to get going. So let's uh, get going on this magpie here. Okay, so we're going to start off with. Um, the basic shape of this magpie is kind of a, kind of like a, a big uh, leaf shape coming through here. Oops. I already use this. Kind of a uh, big leaf shape, and then we've got kind of a kind of another triangle coming this way and that way. And when I'm doing this, I'm looking at the uh, the negative shapes. Now remember the negative shapes are all the shapes around whatever you're drawing. So what's around what you're drawing is as important as what you're drawing. Okay, so I'm looking at all these shapes and this wonderful picture was taken by uh, my great friend uh, Ken Richardson as are all the still photographs in uh, this episode of magpies you can see that um, that a lot of the pictures are around water and uh, Ken built uh, quite a few years ago he built a pond in his backyard in uh, Calgary Alberta and uh, it's unreal how much wildlife comes uh, through his uh, yard especially post uh, post COVID um, or no, I guess it's not post COVID. It's still COVID. Uh, his wife, Julia, also a great friend of mine. Uh, she bought Ken a wildlife cam and the last couple of weeks they've had a bobcat in their, uh, in their backyard. So um, I'm hoping uh, that, Ken is going to uh, possibly lend me some great bobcat photos at some point. So, um, yeah, this is a great photo that Ken's supplied. Ken's also a uh, great, great artist. Like, he should be the one that's showing you how to draw wildlife in particular because he's a, a fantastic hunter. Uh, uh, angler 
and he knows so much about uh, nature that I don't so anyway um, we can see the angle of the the feet here in the, uh, the talons and the magpie are a uh, member of the uh, corvid family not the covid family the corvid family like crows and blue jays ravens etc we drew a raven a little while ago and they're all very very intelligent highly intelligent especially when it comes to uh, um, food they're very smart and opportunistic and uh, if you're not paying attention they're going to take the food also they recognize themselves in their reflection as i was mentioning uh, in the beginning so these are all the uh, kind of a that's going to be a basic outline the shadow that's uh, being cast by the magpie here is also very important. Now, your shadow is what uh, always grounds uh, your whatever you're drawing, whether it's an object or it's a uh, a human or another different kind of being. My kids make fun of me because my students because they say what what are you saying beans beans like what we're not drawing beans and what i mean is beings beings human beings not beans okay so we got some basic basic uh outline of the magpie just double checking to make sure this is fitting on the camera. Yep, there we go. Uh, yep, good. Okay. So I'm going to go over and I'm following the pencil along the uh, outside to make sure that I've got the right. Uh, proportions and that everything is is correct you probably get tired of me saying this every episode but you can't build a house until you've got a solid foundation because everything that you do build on if it's crooked to begin with then it's not going to turn out right and then you know you have to start over we don't want to start over. We want to get the accuracy down first. So we'll start off drawing the, the outline or the blueprint uh, lightly until it's, uh, it's accurate. Now, um, I think we're about ready to, to lay in some... Uh, shading here okay again I'm just going to double check you know just follow along while I'm while I'm uh, doing some shading I'm not going to worry too much about uh, details like getting the eyeball just right or whatever like really tiny details what I'm interested in right now is just getting the big starting off with the big dark areas and this paper is really nice because it's showing off a really uh, kind of a uh, very nice grain um, this, this paper has got a very beautiful grain to it which is cool um, some things about the magpie when my uh, son Kai when he was very young well, I guess it would have been in, uh, in probably about the year 2000. He would have been uh, 
no, before then, would have been about 1996. So he would have been uh, four years old. Uh, I used to take him to the playground in, uh, where my wife and I both did. And uh, that was in uh, the Silver Spring area of uh, Calgary. We lived there. And uh, what I noticed every time we went is that there would be a, uh, a white magpie. I, at first, when I first saw it, I couldn't believe it. I thought it was a dove or a very unusual bird. But everywhere where it was gray, I mean, everywhere where the magpie was black, it wasn't a true albino in that it didn't have pink eyes or it wasn't bright white, but everywhere where it was uh, kind of uh, um, supposed to be black, it was very, very light gray. And so this magpie would come around to the... Uh, uh, condo we were living in at the time, and it'd follow us to the playground. It would sit on the in the uh, playground on the playground equipment while we were uh, while Kai was going down the slide and whatnot. And, um, it was just really cool, and uh, so I decided to uh, do a painting about it. And uh, in the painting, I was influenced by a. Uh, painter from Finland named uh, Axley Gallen Kalala. Now, he was a great painter uh, in the, um, geez, I guess it would be the 1800s or early 1900s. I'm not sure, but um, he did a painting I really liked. It was called uh, Boy and a Crow. And so I decided to do a painting of Kai based on that painting, kind of the composition and and that, and uh, I called it uh, boy and mag, uh, boy and a magpie, and um, I thought uh, that was really going to be a lot of fun. I I know that uh, actually Gallen Kalala was uh, he did very famous um, illustrations for a, a famous. Uh, uh, finish, uh, I believe it's a super long poem called the Caligula. And uh, so um, for my uh, followers in Finland there, um, that's uh, how that painting uh, came about. And uh, also, um, the magpies have always uh, kind of followed Kai around to this day. When I go for a walk with them, there's magpies seem to be around him. So there you go. Now, I've had a couple great teachers that uh, both had writ, wrote songs about magpies. And um, uh, the first one is, um, I know an elder, and uh, Yithka elder, that's uh, or known as Stony Nakoda, and uh, by the name of John Stevens. Now, uh, John was a uh, elder. He resolved a very... Uh, um, I guess it was a conflict in 1994. So he's a peacemaker in his, and uh, he um, he taught me a lot um, about uh, ceremony and, and whatnot. And uh, he knew. Uh, he told me. He had songs for uh, a lot of different beings. I'm going to say beings because animals doesn't sound right. Birds doesn't sound right. I mean, these are, these are uh, I guess you call them sentient beings. They're, they're just like us. And uh, there goes my cat right now on the door. She's a sentient being too. So anyway, um, 
John had over 360 songs, all these different beans, you know, uh, rocks, eagles, deer, everything. And uh, so um, I'm sure he, he at one time, I was with him when he sang a magpie song, I seem to recall. And, uh, you know, he's just a really great guy. Now, uh, I have another friend that's a singer that you might know of. I'm going to name drop here is, is Ian Tyson. Now, um, Ian has got a great song about the magpie. And uh, I'm going to phone him and ask him how he is, but I'm also going to ask him a few questions about the song. So we'll give him a call. Okay, uh, hi Ian. Yeah, uh, you know what, I've got uh, my students, my grade 7 and 8 students from Blackie School, they had uh, a few questions for you about your uh, magpie uh, song. And uh, okay. the first question is, what compelled you to write a song about a magpie? And um, one of my uh, students had a question for you. Uh, he asked you, uh, what do you mean by I am you and you are me? Well, it, 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 that's exactly like it sounds, you know. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I was saying that I was, I was, you know, parts of me are a magpie and, and parts of the magpie are, are, are are the are me the writer Ian? You know, uh, I mean that's that's self that's self explanatory. Yeah. Okay. And um, I guess uh, do you hope that the West ain't never gonna die? Uh, that, that's what, I, what my hope. That's what you know. The, the, the my hope would be the writer the writer of the song is hope the the the. The West will never die. The magpie sticks around. They can't, you know, they kill off all the magpies like they killed off all the, the bison. And then, uh, you know. Yeah. Huh. Well, thanks a lot, Ian. I think, uh, I think that was a good minute and a half. And uh, um, I hope you're feeling uh, healthy and everything. And uh, and uh, we'll be uh, hopefully seeing you soon after this. Uh, COVID uh, nonsense is over. Yeah, okay, well, thanks so much for uh, talking to me. Okay, Paul. Oh, all right, we'll, we'll see you later. Okay, I'm going to go in with this uh, white pencil a little bit and uh, just uh, wherever I see that it's really white. Gonna go in. And maybe I'll try this chalk. This chalk might work a little bit better.
And of course, what I'm most excited about always is uh, how uh, my students at the uh, school I'm working, the Blackie School, how they're going to interpret this. They had uh, some great interpretations of uh, the crow, which you can see here. And uh, I always love what the students do because um, for one thing, they're fearless. They don't really worry about uh, making mistakes. They're having fun doing, uh, doing your drawing. And I always say the more fun you have doing your drawing, the better it's going to turn out. And uh, it's not a competition. Don't worry that uh, about selling uh, your work or whatever. Um, for me, um, drawing is always uh, a way to relax, have fun, put on some music, you know, have a cup of tea, whatever, and uh, to just totally enjoy drawing. And you know what? If you're if you're in any kind of uh, Pain. There's a lot of COVID out there right now, and um, you, you you're not comfortable. Well, I find that uh, when I'm sick, even drawing, I will totally forget my pain, and that's important. And uh, so, it's a pain reliever, and it's a to me, it's always uh, meditation. It's the same thing. I've been learning about that this year with uh, yoga. and I've been following uh, yoga with Adrienne. She's really um, taught me and my wife a lot. A lot about uh, breathing. Breathing is, uh, well, maybe that's one of the most important things there is. And uh, particularly with uh, with COVID, you you don't want to be on a ventilator. So you know if you can if you can uh, take some tips on breathing. We all want to stay out of the hospital. We want to stay off that ventilator. So anyway, drawing is <clears throat> to me just about as fun as it gets. And I'm uh, so happy to uh, share whatever I know uh, with you because um, it's really made uh, my life uh, a lot better. I love drawing all the time. And you know, you, you really live for those drawings and paintings that you're, you don't even really feel like, wow, did I do that? <laughs> So Steve Yerkel, did I do that? Yeah, just like that. That must be why he said that, did I do that? Because maybe he was doing some art and he uh, couldn't believe that he did it because he didn't wasn't conscious of what he was doing. He was just enjoying. And uh, that's what I want for you. You know, I can see I didn't get the proportions perfect, but you know what? That's going to give it personality. And uh, like I was saying about the kids that come up with their different personality they show, we're all drawing the same thing, but it's totally different. And uh, personality and I would say the spirit of the piece. Where are you getting the spirit of the magpie? Does that feel like um, a magpie's kind of, mischievous. Like I said, you can't turn your back on a magpie when there's food around, just like my cats or our cats. They're gonna, they're very playful too. They like to play. Some say they're annoying. We had a parrot for a while and I don't know. 
I didn't enjoy the parrot. I got to be honest as a pet because the first thing the parrot learned was to uh, imitate the magpies outside. And that's the last thing you want in your house is the magpie noise. Not too relaxing. I hear my wife laughing in the next room, and she's a writer. And uh, if you're going to be a writer, it's going to be 80% of your time is going to be devoted to uh, to reading. So sounds like she just read something funny. Part of being an artist is knowing when to quit. When is that uh, piece that you're working on? Excuse me. When's that piece that you're working on? When is it done? Sometimes it'll tell you if you're listening when it's done. But to me, that's always the difference between, I guess, a professional artist and maybe a person that hasn't done it as much and that is um, when to pull away from your work to not overdo it to not uh, spin your wheels and I think this is getting pretty close pretty close now even though it's not an exact replica of the photo doesn't have to be. You'll find if you work on a uh, a tinted paper that's a midtone like this, you have to you, you'll do far less work because your midtones are already established for you. They're already there, so uh, the work will go f faster. That goes for painting too, and the pastels that I do. going to go much faster and I think you're going to be more pleased with the result too Put a little plumage under there. Okay, it is the um, first day of February. Um, what is it? Yeah, it's 01. 
And uh, today we drew snake pie. And I'll just do my signature here with my little charcoal pencil. There we go. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.